Hey everyone and welcome back. Now in today's video we will be discussing about labels and selectors. Now labels are basically a key value pair that you attach to a Kubernetes objects such as pods. So let's understand this with a simple example where you have two distinct set of environments here. The first environment consists of a server, a database and a load balancer. And in a similar way, a second set of environment consists of a load balancer, a server and a database. Now, if someone tells you that, hey, can you go ahead and stop all the resources associated with a dev environment? Now, if you look from here, it is very difficult to see which server or which database belongs to a dev environment. The reason why it is difficult to know is because there are no appropriate labels which are associated with all of these resources. Now in a second example here, what we have done is we have added label to each and every resource here. So the first server has a label where the key here is name and the value is KP Labs gateway. And it also has a second label where the environment is production. Now in a similar way, the second resource has a label where name is KP Labs hyphen DB and the environment is production. Similar way, if you look into the second environment here, the name is KP hyphen DB and the environment is dev. Now from this label, which is associated with a individual resource, you will be able to quickly find out that, Hey, the lower three resources, which are created, they belong to the dev environment. And now I can go ahead and stop all of these resources right away. Now, in order for you to know about this, having a label associated with this resource is very important. So let me quickly give you an example in terms of AWS perspective. So it becomes easier for us to understand. So I'm in my AWS console here and here you will see that there are three servers which are currently running. Now let's say that someone tells you go ahead and stop a dev server. Now from here, it is very difficult for you to know which among these three server is a dev server. The reason why it is difficult for us to know is because there are no appropriate labels which are associated with these three servers. And this is the reason why attaching a label is very important. Now here do remember that depending upon the technology that you use, the name label will change. So AWS might call it as tag. Now in the Kubernetes environment, you will call it as label and so on. So although the naming convention is different, but the overall concepts remains the same. So if you have worked with AWS, labels are very similar to tags so that it becomes easier for you to grasp. So let's do one thing. Let's go ahead and add a tag. What I'll do, I'll add two tags. Now, if you would look into this diagram, there were two labels which were attached. One was associated with the name and second was associated with the environment. So let's go ahead and do that. So here I'll call name as KP labs hyphen production and we'll add one more tag or one more label call as ENV and the ENV here is production. I'll go ahead and I'll save this. Now in a similar way for the second server, let's go ahead and add one more tag. I'll call it as name and let's call it as payment gateway. And for this, I'll add a tag. The tag is dev. All right. Now, if you go ahead and refresh it, the first server, again, you are not able to identify from here, but if you look into the tags here, you will see that there is a tag which is associated with the server where the name is KP labs hyphen production and the ENV is production. So if you click on any of the server, it is very easy for you to see that this server belongs to a dev environment or the first server belongs to a production environment. So this is what labels are. Now, definitely uh, you can make it much more easier so that uh, within year it can appear. So let me give you one more example. So if I add a tag with a capital name and let's call it as app gateway. And if I click on save, you see it appears within the console itself. So if you do it this way, this way also it works well because ultimately the thing that you see over here is nothing but the value associated with the key. 
so if you look into the first slide labels are nothing but a key value pairs so within here also you have a key value pair where the key is name and the value is app gateway and similar to that within the second slide you'll see you have key value pair so the key is name the value is kp labs hyphen gateway and so on so this is what labels are now the next important part is selectors now selectors basically allows us to filter objects based on labels so generally in kubernetes whenever you are using labels you will be using selectors as well in a lot of occurrences so let's take an example so the first example is show me all the objects which has label where env is equal to prod so now what will happen is you will see all the resources here which has the environment as production so this is one simple use case now the second use case here is show me all the objects where environment is equal to dev so now it will show you all the resources where the environment is dev so this is the importance of selectors so through selectors you can look or you can filter the resources based on labels so again let's quickly understand this with the aws terminology because here we are working with ui so it becomes much more easier so let's take a first example where we were discussing show me all the objects where the label is production so in aws you can easily do that uh, with the filter here so you can consider this filter as a selector so let's do one thing let's go a bit up here and within the tag keys here you have a key of env so i'll click on env and i'll say production so now what will happen is it will only show you all the resources which belongs to the production environment or in short all the resources which has a tag where env is production so this is one way now you can also modify it to show you all the resource which belongs to dev environment so again it will show you only one resource which belongs to the dev environment so this is what selectors are now through selectors irrespective of how many instances you have so in current environment we have three instances however in production there can be hundreds or even thousands of instances so through the selector you will be able to select or you will be able to view the right resources based on the labels which are associated with them now from the kubernetes perspective there can be multiple objects which can be part of a kubernetes cluster now some of the objects are pods you have services secrets namespaces you have deployments and so many of them so now what you can do is you can attach label to the objects which are part of the kubernetes cluster now in the aws example we had attached a label or a tag associated with a ec2 instance now you can even attach a label to a load balancer a rds instance and so on similar to that even in kubernetes you have various objects like pod services secrets and you can attach labels to all of these objects so let's understand the selector part again so in kubernetes perspective as we were discussing there can be multiple objects so in this diagram we have a total of 6 pods which are currently running now by the name of this pod as we were discussing it is difficult to identify what this pod does whether it belongs to dev environment whether it belongs to prod environment and so on so the next thing that you do is you assign a label to your kubernetes object so to every pod here you assign a label where the env is the key and dev or prod is the associated value so from the label now you can easily identify that the first pod belongs to dev the second pod belongs to prod and so on so coming back to the selector let's say that you want to have a selector where you want to list all the pods from dev environment so in order to have this use case you will have to make use of selector so what you do you write a selector so what selector will do selector will remove all the pods which does not have env is equal to dev so now you will only be able to see the pods which has this specific environment of dev now in a similar way let's say now you want to list all the pods uh, from the production environment so now what selector will do selector will look into the labels which are associated with the objects 
and all the objects which do not have uh, the environment of prod will be removed from the list. So if you will see now selector will go ahead and remove all the objects which has the env of dev or others which are not prod. So that's what selectors are. So I hope you understood at a high level overview about the labels and selectors. Now before we conclude, uh, let me give you a demo for Kubernetes so that this concept can be understood in a better way. So let's do one thing. Let's do a cube CTL get pods here. Now you see that there are two pods which are running. Now these two pods from the name itself, it becomes difficult to understand which of these pods belongs to dev or which of these pods belongs to production. So now what you can do, you can filter it out. So let's say kubectl get pods and I'll specify by label where env is equal to dev. And now you see it will only show you the pod which belongs to the development environment or in short the pod which has a label where the key is env and the value is dev. In a similar way, you can even do env is equal to prod. And now you see, you see one more pod which has the environment is equal to production. So in this way, you can select the appropriate pods depending upon the use cases. So let's do one thing. Let's do a kubectl describe pod. And before that, let's do a kubectl get pods yet again. And let's do a kubectl describe pod and I'll specify the name of one of the pods here. Now within the details which have been presented, if you look here, one of the details here is the label. Now one of the label here is env is equal to dev. So this is the label which is associated with this pod. This is very similar here where you have a pod and you have a label where env is equal to dev. So that is what labels are and through selectors you will be able to filter the Kubernetes objects depending on the labels which are associated with them. Now attaching a label to your Kubernetes objects is very important. I'll share you one uh, real world use case. So in one of the organizations where I had recently joined, what they used to do, they never had uh, any of the tags or any of the labels which are associated with uh, the servers there. So it was very difficult uh, to find which server belonged to which environment. And in one of the email thread, uh, one of the developer uh, requested uh, the team member to go ahead and delete the development EC2 instance. And what the team member did, he deleted the EC2 instance which belonged to the staging environment and all of the QA team came running at the DevOps team asking why did they delete the staging environment. And this was one of the reasons. The reason why this mistake happened was because there was no label which was associated with the resources in AWS. And this is the reason why having labels is extremely important not only for the Kubernetes objects but also for the non-Kubernetes environments like AWS. So that's the high level overview about labels and selectors. I hope you understood the concepts of label and selectors with respect to Kubernetes objects. So with this, we'll conclude this video. I hope this video has been informative for you and I look forward to see you in the next video.